Love this podcast? Support this show through the ACAST supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give, and there's no regular commitment. Just click the link in the show description to support now. You're about to enter into a new world of knowledge, curiosities, and high strangeness. This is a podcast of Straight Up Strange Productions. Tonight, got no fancy introduction here, it is the Halloween special where I share some audio from our recent investigation at the Bloody Bridge in uh, up near St. Mary's, Ohio. So that's all I got for this uh, special edition of Small Town Secrets. Hello, and welcome to this special edition of Small Town Secrets. Just a little Halloween-ish special to release. And I wanted, because I wanted wanted to share this with everyone. As some of you know, throughout the summer and now into the fall, me and a friend have been conducting a series of investigations that usually resolve around doing the Estes method. I'll get into all of this in a little bit. Uh, we did one, which I released on YouTube. Just I was really just playing around some video stuff, so I made a video out of it. I may release it at some point in time on the podcast feed, and with some really interesting results and some shocking activity. Go check out the YouTube and watch the watch a little video, or wait until I inadvertently upload it into a podcast, uh, and then. We went to, we also did one at a place near here called Gallagher's Finn, which I haven't really done a whole lot with yet because the information that we got from that requires some, uh, some looking into, some research to find out like what was there before the history of the place. So I haven't had a chance, even though I've had nothing but time on my hands for the last six months to really dig into that and get a hold of like a historical society and try to figure out what was on the land there, but we'll get around to that. And then we went and did one at TNT area in Point Pleasant, uh, which I was debating. So, okay. And then after that, we did one at Bloody Bridge in St. Mary's, Ohio, which I'm going to talk about here in a little bit. So I kind of juggled. I'm like, which one is better? For Halloween, I think that the Bloody Bridge one is a little more Halloween-y. It involves like a legend that actually has names and stuff attached to it. So I think it actually happened. And it gave us a really good experience. However, the TNT domes are the TNT domes. You know, 
And we had we had we had some interesting stuff there too. But the more I thought about, it, the more I'm like, let's do Bloody Bridge for Halloween, and then we'll save the TNT one for uh, the the anniversary of the Silver Bridge collapse. So I'll I'll do that one in December. I'll release, I'll get that one prepped up and we'll do another special event, one of these in December. But tonight, it's all about the Bloody Bridge in St. Mary's, Ohio. So first, like, what is Bloody Bridge? What it is, is a bridge up near St. Mary's, Ohio, which is very close to Grand Lake St. Mary's. The bridge goes over what is left of the Ohio Erie Canal system. And now it's a trailhead. So you can go to, it's got a little parking lot. And you can go, you know, you can hike one way and go to Six Mile Creek, or you can hike the other way and go to Lock 14 and then the Lock 13 and so on. Uh, but something happened on that bridge. And actually at the site, they have, it's not a plaque, it's more like a memorial. I'm going to read what the memorial actually says about Bloody Bridge. It gives you a little insight into the story. During the canal years of the 1850s, a rivalry grew between Bill Jones and Jack Billings over the love of Minnie Warren. This became a hatred by Bill because Minnie chose Jack. On a fall night in 1854, returning from a party, Minnie and Jack were surprised on the bridge by Bill, armed with an axe. With one swing, Bill severed Jack's head. Seeing this, Minnie screamed and fell from the bridge into a watery grave. Bill disappeared. And when a skeleton was found years later in a nearby well, people asked, was it suicide or justice? So that's a very succinct uh, story of the legend. And I don't know if it's all true. So I, I looked it up. I was able to find some more stuff on it. Um, every other thing I found says that it happened in June of 1854 not in the fall. And apparently, I believe Minnie worked on a canal boat with her father. The canal boat was actually called the Minnie Warren. It was named after her. And Jack worked on another canal boat. And I'm not sure what um, Bill Jones did. I don't know if he worked with the canals or anything, but apparently their, their canal boats would pass along the canal all the time. And so that's how they got to know each other. And then one night they just both happened to dock up by St. Mary's. And so they went to this party. So it's been a little hard trying to find these names because I don't even know if they're from Allways County or St. Mary's. Like they were on the canal. They could have lived anywhere and they just, you know, happened to be in the same place and this happened. But they, you know, it does seem to be a thing that did actually transpire. We've got everyone's names and the bridge is there. And, you know, the All Glaze County Historical Society has decided to erect a little thing to tell about it. So I wanted to go there. I wanted to do this. And um, we got a chance to do it a couple of weeks ago. And when we got there, uh, the vibe wasn't really there. We're like, I don't know if we're going to get anything here. It just didn't feel right. But we sat down, we did an Estes Method session. I was actually the one in the Estes Method session, and I never go first. And Heather was the one asking all the questions. So uh, if you don't know what an Estes Method is, I will explain it right now. I've talked about it before many times. Uh, I talked about it with the people that originated it, uh, Connor Randall and Carl Pfeiffer of Hellier fame, and Spirits of the Stanley. They, like I said, they figure this whole thing out. They wanted to legitimize the spirit box. And so what you do is you take a spirit box, you hook it up to a set of very good soundproof headphones. You put a blindfold on so that you can't see and you can't hear anybody around you. You're kind of sensory deprived from the uh, your surroundings. But then you have someone asking questions. And it is your job when you are stuck in the method to listen to the static, to listen to the little bleeps and blips of the radio signal as it scans back and forth, to pick out words. Sometimes they are words that jump right out at you. Sometimes it's more of a, a thing where you hear some static or you hear something garbled 
that may not really be a word, but your mind clicks and goes, it said this. And then you, once again, uh, kind of say it out loud. And after a while, if there's something going on, there seems to be a conversation going between the person asking the questions and the person using under the method uh, talking with the static. So you're kind of this medium, you're this intermediary thing in between uh, the phenomenon, if you will, and the person asking the questions. I always kind of, not kind of, I guess I do. I always uh, say it's kind of like an audio Rorschach test, you know, you get in there, you don't dwell on it too much. You you hear words, you say them out, you feel words. That's a good way of saying it sometimes. And you say them out. So that's what it is. And you get really interested in results. And so I'm going to play this. I'm just going to kind of let it go unedited for the most part. And uh, I will, I might cut in a couple of times throughout just to give you some more insight into what was going on. But yeah, this is our Estes Method investigation into Bloody Bridge. So everyone have a listen and uh, I hope you enjoy it. All right. Welcome to the Fred and Heather show. You're currently underneath Bloody Bridge, St. Mary's, Ohio. He'll give you details later. I'm just here to ask some questions. If there is anyone that wants to talk to us, the man in the very puffy gray jacket is the one you'd like to speak to at this moment. Through the device that he is currently holding in his hands, rubbing, caressing gently. Nothing. Nobody. I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. You'd think there'd be at least somebody. He's one person. Nobody has got anything to say. I mean, it doesn't even have to do with the bridge. Did you die in that field over there? Just come say hi. Hello. Well, now. Well, hello. And who might you be? Would you like to talk to us for a little while? You know. About the bridge? I mean, I read the plaque. That's about it. Flex? You want me to flex? <laughs> um, or do you understand the connotation of the... Anything, really. <laughs> Anything, really. What would you like... What? What exactly would you like me to do? That's right. Or maybe it's right. Wow, super friendly. Can I call you Casper? What is your name? What would you like to speak to us about today other than flexing? Out. Out. You want us to get out? You want to get out? Out of where? Is there a place or something that I need to help you get out of? That one thing. That one thing. What one thing? We're out in the middle of the country. There's a lot of places someone could get stuck. Gotta give me a little more than that.
sounded like Andre or Ombre. Andre. Andrew. Ombre. Were you sent out here to work? Anything else? Can you give me anything else? Is it a well house? Is it a wheelhouse? Is it a barn? Is it a ditch? Is it a culvert? Is it a lock? Oh, so close. Did you die in the lock? Hi. <laughs> Hello. That's the thing. Okay. So in the lock. Female voice, by the way. Oh. Did you drown? So save me. If it was happening now, I would. How did it's you... It's cold. Yes, it is actually cold out here. It happened. In the cold? Was it cold when it happened? Is this about the same time of year? How did it happen? Tell me. Tell me the story. Singing? What like the word singing? singing, not people singing. Were you singing on the bridge? Were you walking by the lock and singing? By the canal? Anything? Nothing? Can you give me a name? A nickname? Mine? Yes, yours. That's it. Yeah. What is it? I'm ready. You ready to give me your name? You know. I already know. Oh, are you really her or are you just pretending to be her? I would like an answer to that one, please. So I just want to come from my point of view for this real quick. There's a lot of times where sometimes you don't hear anything intelligible for a little bit. And that's not for lack of trying. Sometimes you just can't catch the words or maybe something comes and goes and it's too fast and your brain just doesn't quite get it. So there are times where sometimes the person under the method, the person with the headphones on and the spirit box uh, doesn't say anything because they're trying to grab stuff. But I got to say, there are a couple places, this is one of them, where it gets really quiet. And I mean, it gets quiet everywhere. Like, I wasn't even hearing anything in the static. It was just, which was kind of odd. And then as soon as it was like, we would get to a point where we're like, well, maybe we should stop. Stuff would start popping back up again. So that happens a couple of times. Uh, it's pretty apparent when it does. Because if it's not really her, I'd like to know who you really are. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you have to say, not about her. I know her story. That's it. Okay. So tell me about you.
Come on. What's your name? Sad. Are you sad? Woman's voice ain't sad, by the way. Why are you sad? What happened? If you're not really her, what happened? Ooh, help me. How can I help? Yep. What can I do to help? What am I exactly am I helping with? Sad. Like sing songy sad. Okay, so you're very dramatically sad. Okay. Woman's voice again saying that. I understand. You're very sad. But you have to tell me why. What's your name? How can I help? You gotta give me answers. Can't really do much but sit here and twiddle my thumbs. It's me. So it is you? Coming to. Okay. Right now. Okay. Coming to, to where? To here? Come here. Come on then. Why don't you come talk to us? Unfortunately, you'll have to stay here when we leave, but you can at least come talk to us while we're here. Tell me a name. Give me something. The president. The, are we talking about the president then or the president now? Because let's just not get in to a political debate right now, honey. I want to know what happened. I want to know why you're sad. Seeing. Okay. What are you seeing? Am I supposed to be seeing it? Show me. Ah. I got a ah. Always. Well, you don't want to show me? Help us? Or help, maybe? Just help? I'm trying to help, but you have to show me. Show me. The world. about the world. Time? It's been a long time, yeah. The world is much different. I'm sure it's changed quite a bit over the years. In Sydney. Okay. Did you come from Sydney? So Sydney's like the next major town south of St. Mary's. Uh, just just to give you a little geography. So it's not super far away. It's not super close either. Probably to get f there from Sydney, it's maybe a 45-minute-ish drive up the interstate and the back roads and all that. Just just some input, some local input there. Did you come north a little ways? Did you get married? Hmm? If you're not her... Or are you her? You have to tell me. Can okay, I give me something? If you won't show me, at least tell me. Don't lose that energy now. I know it's cold. I'm right here. I think. 
What do you think? Tell me. I'd love to know. That's right, right there. Oh, okay, right where? What the hell that I'm looking at? Did you fall? Hit your head? Hmm? Knock yourself out? Drowned in a puddle? I mean, granted, this is a little more in a puddle, but... Doubt it's as deep now as it was back then. First of all... Excuse you? <laughs> you gonna tell me how it is? Go on sea. Then. The sea? Okay. Did you travel across the sea? Maybe. Okay. Okay, so are we not talking about Sydney, Ohio? We're actually talking about somewhere else called Sydney? I think we all figured out which one that one is. Did you travel across the sea from Sydney? Yeah. Is that supposed to be People a... People change. Yes. People do change. Every day. It's a universal truth. The world and the people will always make, continue to change. But you gotta answer me. Did things change in Sydney and that's why you had to come here? Don't gotta be snooty about it. But I'd like to know. I mean, so I came all the way up here. So, will you please tell me? Did you come? From Sydney? Did something change? You had to leave? Mm. You got about two more minutes. And then I'm going to uh, pull him out. So if you've got anything left to say, now's your time. Can you tell me why you came from Sydney? Why you came to rural Ohio? What was the pull there? We all take for granted the places that we live at some point or another. See it. See what? What am I seeing? The countryside? Is that why uh. I came here?
Gotta give me something. You got one minute. It is. So it's the countryside. Everything. Everything. Where the countryside is, everything, life, I mean, is where we grow our crops. A lot of people would agree with you. They go. They go where? Everywhere? I mean, anybody. To anybody, yeah. Same. Same or same? Or a saying? Heaven? Do you believe in a heaven? What I've done? What did you do? Do you think you won't get into heaven? I see it. You see what? The things that you've done? Come on, you gotta give me more. How am I supposed to help? What exactly am I helping with? You never did answer that. The only thing, maybe? The only thing? The only thing. What? The sin that you committed that you won't get into heaven for? Is that the only thing? In my experience. What about in your experience about people? What would you? What would you do? What would I do with what? About these people? All of a sudden. Yes, all of a sudden there they appear through the trees, the two bikers. Oh, look, here comes two more. Stop. Stop doing what? All right. Okay. It looks like Come with me. me. Where are we going? Are we going away from the... Uh, Crazy trail biking people. Sounded, Sounded like, like ten, 10 seconds. seconds. Yeah, it's about ten seconds till they cross over this bridge. There it is. It's, it's me. me. Who is you, though? New house. Oh, did you get a new house when you got here? Hmm? Was that, was that part of the draw? Brand new house. Rural Ohio. Fascinating. A hundred. What? A hundred what? A hundred dollars? A hundred acres. A hundred years. A hundred days? All of them. Okay. 
Marcus. If it was 100 years ago, you got 100 acres. Hi. For a so after this high, it seems, or at least to me, it feels like if we are communicating with someone, and I'm not saying it's the people from the Bloody Bridges, and it doesn't seem to be, or maybe it was, maybe names are mixed up. Who knows how great records were kept back then. But it seems that it switches now after this to somebody else. Dollars, hello. Are you new or are you just saying hi again? Hmm? Frank, Frank, this, this man. man. Who's Frank? Was he the one you came over for? Oh my. Was in a recent, and then I kind of just trailed off a little bit. Over all of this. Oh, okay. So Frank had all of this, all this land. And was he a good looking man? Is that the, the oh my that we heard? Oh my, what a man. Oh my, oh my. Oh. Was Frank a good man? That. What about that? That noise? It was just the people putting their bikes away. I admit it. You admit what? What did you do? You still haven't told me what you did. Now, you see. What about now? Juliet. Who's Juliet? Is that you? Are you Juliet? The modern world. Yeah, I know. Waiting. waiting. Waiting for what? Is the modern world waiting? Or are you waiting for the modern world? I mean, it's... Right now. Yeah, well. I don't think they'll ever come to this part of the country, sweetie. More. More what? Wouldn't it? I mean, eventually, but... How long and will our world burn before that happens? It's me. Okay. What about you? As a side note, the right side of my body just got unequivocally cold. Cool? <laughs> yes, cold. This is uh, pretty interesting. So, like I have to say again, I can't hear her. I can't see her. I don't know what she's saying. I don't know what she's doing. She could have taken the Jeep keys and went and got Dairy Queen and just left me there for all I know. But she talks about how she is getting kind of a cold spot or a cold chill on one side of her body. And then I immediately say the word cool, which, I mean, make of it what you will, but we found that to be uh, pretty intriguing, to say the least. And the wind is actually coming on my left side, so... Happening. Yeah. Or maybe everything. In trouble. Who's in trouble? You're in trouble or I'm in trouble? You know. Why would you be in trouble? Why am I in trouble? Why is there anybody in trouble? What happened? This is 
a safe space. I can see, see it. it. So what Heather doesn't mention here, she does say this is a safe space, but when she said that, she started to visualize a spot under the bridge. We were sitting under the bridge. Uh, like a, a box, a square box of white light that she kind of made the intent and beamed out the intent uh, that it was a safe space for something from the phenomenon, a ghost, an entity, whatever, could approach and be protected in that spot. And once again, I can't hear, I can't see her. I definitely can't read her mind. And I seem to, I seem to or the person that is talking to me, through the Essie's method, seems to um, acknowledge that they can see this white, safe space that she is envisioning. Good. I can too. So no matter what happens here, whatever you tell me. Come on, what happened? One more. One more? Okay. See? Dead. Okay. Who's dead? You're dead? I mean, well, unfortunately, that's probably true. Anyway. <laughs> We've been here. Yeah, I'm here. You're here. You've been here before. You're just uh, back again for a little visit. So you're going to tell me what happened? The long way. Okay, we can take the long way around. Something. The wind's making me colder. You're making me colder. You felt it. Yeah, I did. I absolutely felt that. See? Me? Show me. Don't let them scare you away. Come back here. Swinging. I can imagine that would be a thing that would be happening right now. There are children on the bridge right above me. Talk to me or what? Singing. Singing. This, this time, time a dude said, said it. it. <laughs> All right. Who are you? And, and me. Okay. Were you both singing? Hmm? 
Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Did you just need me to go that direction? Are you over that way? Are you up the channel that way? The big one. That was a big laugh. From the bridge above. I'm sure they're all finding this very Is amusing. It? Yeah, there was a track that went by with some music playing. You're gonna tell me what happened? Away. Right. I'd say so. You gotta give me something. Um, and it cut out for a minute, and then you came back, and then these fuckers showed up, and they've been <laughs> dropping stuff off the bridge and like walking around. There. They were they could hear us, but they couldn't find us, and so they <laughs> were dropping shit off the bridge. <laughs> so, um. You really need to listen to this. <laughs> so, uh, that's it. That was the entire session. We got essentially semi-heckled by people throwing stuff off the bridge. But a few uh, a few after notes now that I've listened to this once again all the way through and have chimed in with some stuff. One, the jacket's not that puffy, all right? It's, an, it's a, a jacket that goes inside of a heavier jacket. So how puffy can it really be? Two, I think that had we not stopped early because of people throwing rocks and stuff over the bridge, uh, we might have gotten a little bit further with it. The thing about this place, and the reason why I like this place so much is because no one goes there. It's not like, you know, it's not Waverly Hills. It's not, you know, East State Penitentiary. It's not Mansfield Prison. It's a place where... It's very liminal. It's very quiet. It's very dormant. And so I feel like we went there. We kind of possibly woke some stuff up. Uh, maybe it's the people that were murdered on the bridge. Maybe it's other people around the area. Maybe it's some trickster spirit just fucking with us the entire time, which kind of feels like what it was at the beginning. And then things changed. And, uh, I think the more time you spend doing that in a place, uh, you start to figure it out and the phenomena starts to figure it out and stuff becomes more and more cohesive as you go, go about it. So I think we will definitely return to that and do some other stuff there and maybe make it our own little haunt and see if return trips start to harbor like more interesting results. But that was our little Estes Method session up there. Very pleased with it. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it. And that's going to be it. I'm going to get out of here. And uh, I hope everyone has a happy and safe Halloween. And I'll return on November 7th, I believe, for the beginning of Season 5. Uh, until then, you know, check out stscast.com. It's got links to everything, all the episodes, merch, ways to support the show, uh, sources, all that jazz. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave everyone to celebrate Halloween. Thank you for listening. And if you like the show, just tell somebody, tell a friend about it and 
get them to listen as well. And I will leave it at that. Just remember, until next time, every town has a secret. What is your... Acast powers some of the world's best podcasts. Here's a show we recommend. My name's Sebastian Major, host of the podcast Our Fake History. Have you ever wondered if King Arthur was a real person? Or if the city of Atlantis really existed? Or maybe you've heard that old story that Queen Elizabeth I was actually a man in drag. On Our Fake History, we explore these stories and try to determine what's fact, what's fiction, and what is such a good story that it simply must be told. Subscribe to Our Fake History anywhere you get your podcasts. A cash recommends. <laughs>